to this week's edition of the Comic Geek Dad and what Wolverine means to me. I'm, of course, the host, J.J. Berkey Lewis. I know I said in the last podcast we'd be talking about who the definitive Man of Steel was, and I promise to do that at a later date. For now, we'll be talking about the Wolverine. No, not that Wolverine. The Wolverine. (sighs) Hey, picture post-it type guy. Post the image or you're canned. Thank you. Yes, this edition will be talking about this Wolverine. Back when I was a kid about, oh, that age, I used to walk 15 minutes from my house to pick up comic book titles I was collecting at the time. And one of my biggest collections was the Uncanny X-Men. This was back when X-Men was a single book published by monthly. There was no spin-off franchise books for X-Men at that time. This was before Wolverine had an origin. This was before he was given a birth name of James Howlett. This was before he'd appeared on television as a cartoon. Or even this cartoon. Sheesh, we'll target just about anything to kids nowadays. This was before the seven films that Wolverine appears or will appear in. This was before... Wolverine even became a chibi. And this was, of course, before that guy. Dude! Why is Deadpool in this? Wolverine! My healing factor came from his DNA. So we're like twins, except he's short and furry. And he smells funny. He loves it when people ask him if they can fly the black. Damn it. He's got these awesome adamantium claws that cut through anything, including my body when I piss him off. You lost, I won. Deal with it, bub. There aren't many comic book characters I happen to be older than, but Wolverine is younger than I am, at least conceptually. Brainstormed in late 1973 by comic writer Lynn Wein as an opponent for the Hulk, designed by Marvel Comics legend John Romita Sr. and given the costume colors of the Michigan Wolverines, the Wolverine would make his comic debut on the very last page of The Incredible Hulk 180, written by Wein and illustrated by Hulk artist Herb Trimp in October of 1974. His first full appearance would be in The Incredible Hulk 181, fighting both the Hulk and a supernatural skinwalker called the Wendigo. Then the character would disappear until giant-sized X-Men number one the following year. Due to a cover penciling mistake made of Wolverine's mask by the late great cover and comic illustrator Gil Kane, the late great Dave Cockrum, penciler of Giant Size Dexman No. 1, liked what Kane had done on the cover so much he changed all his pencils to reflect the changes to the mask, firmly establishing Wolverine's distinctive classic costume look. When we handed the writing chores over to Chris Claremont, who at the time served as an editorial assistant, and Chris Claremont became the X-Men writer for an impressive 17-year run. It was still Dave Cockrum that established the unmasked Wolverine look. Claremont and Cockrum also established Wolverine's claws ejecting directly from the back of his hands instead of the gloves that Ween had intended. Today, it's hard to believe the original creative team of this international version of X-Men considered getting rid of the character. That was until John Byrne, who replaced Cockrum for a long run of issues in legendary stories like the Phoenix Saga and Days of Future Past, Byrne's X-Men Swan Song, insisted they keep the only Canadian character changing his role within the group and bringing the character more to the forefront. The reason? Simple. John Byrne was from Canada. While the character of Wolverine has a lot of fathers over his impressive 40-year run, Byrne is partially responsible for setting the template for who Wolverine became. However, it was the four-issue limited series written by Claremont and penciler and writer Frank Miller envisioned during a car trip to the San Diego Comic-Con who firmly established what Wolverine is now. And, unheard of for any other comic book character at the time, Wolverine's origin remained a mystery for close to 20.
20 years. The animated versions of the X-Men made their first appearance in Spider-Man and his amazing friends in the second season episode of Firestar is Born. Angelica Jones, Firestar, who didn't make her first appearance in a Marvel comic until Uncanny X-Men 193 as a member of Emma Frost's mutant team, the Hellions, two years after the cartoon series, was an originally created character for the cartoon due to licensing problems with the Human Torch. This particular story made her a member of the X-Men. Iceman was already a founding member, and the cartoon introduced Professor X, Storm, Cyclops, Angel, and of course, the Australian Wolverine to the television audience. Yes, that's right. Imagine my surprise having read X-Men for the last two years and hearing... Firestar, over here. Coming, Cyclops. This is our other new member, Wolverine. Oh, you doll. Want a piece of fruit? 